What's going on folks, Eddie Carrington, mayor of Flux City. And there's a startup out in San Francisco called Cosmic, and they're deploying what they call mobile robotic micro factories. And they're using these micro factories to basically build homes faster and what they would consider cheaper out in Southern California, which was the spot where, if you can remember, all of those wildfires sparked and destroyed numerous homes, multi-million dollar homes in a, a number of scenarios in, in multiple neighborhoods. And so they're deploying this tech with a goal of being able to address the labor shortage that we have when it comes to skilled trades, shorten build times, and what they would call reduce costs by hundreds of thousands of dollars. So this caught my eye because the city of Detroit has close to 100,000 vacant parcels that may be able to benefit from a concept such as this. Modular is a thing. I'm not sure if, once again, they're considering this as modular, but with these types of innovative strategies, maybe there's opportunity here to build housing quicker. So let's check it out. Since the fires, fewer than a dozen homes have been fully rebuilt in L.A. County, and about 70 percent of people who were displaced are still out of their homes. Around 900 wow. homes are under construction and could possibly be on pace to be completed later this year. One San Francisco based company has deployed its AI robotic technology to Southern California to build homes in the burn zones. Kenny Choi shows us how this company is trying to transform the future of construction. All right. So a quick refresh of what happened in Southern California roughly a year ago that caused so much damage in California. It's, it's unbelievable. Back in February of last year, a series of 14 wildfires affected LA, San Diego County, and low humidity, buildup of vegetation, winds as high as 100 miles an hour. The wildfire fires killed between 31 and 440 people. I'm not sure what the variation is with regard to the amount of people that perished, but that's a pretty big gap. Forced more than 200,000 to evacuate, destroyed more than 18,000 homes and structures, and burned over 57,000 acres of land in total. That is insane. And the video that we're watching mentioned that this year they're planning on having roughly 900 of those 18,000 properties rebuilt. And so a, a fraction of what used to exist in, in these neighborhoods roughly a year ago from today. Its framing and panels may look like any other home, but what you see here has been built using a robot, except for the cement foundation. Prasanna Vasudevan is the homeowner. I've never built houses before. <laughs> this is my first ever time um, exploring this aspect of home building. He recently bought this parcel of land in a burn scarred area of Santa Rosa, ravaged by the 2017 Tubbs fire. Vasudevan began researching how long it would take to build a fire resistant house. The average time frame that I used to get is anywhere from one year to three years, and I didn't have that much of leeway. To do that, a San Francisco based company called Cosmic is using its mobile robotic microfactory. They've started to build homes and ADUs in parts of Los Angeles decimated by the 2025 wildfires. What's intriguing about the build that they are showing is that it's still a stick build. It still has your two by fours and your OSB and materials that you would assume if a fire happens would catch fire. But it's really about how you kind of seal the envelope in one format or another. And so being fire resistant doesn't mean no wood is just a strategy of how you're going to once again seal this overall uh, envelope with whether it be fire caulk or whatever strategy certain fire resistant materials on the exterior of the uh, frame or of the bones of the house many things can kind of help defend your property against fire but the homeowner that they are interviewing it's interesting because he bought the vacant land that once housed a, a home on that property. And so I'm going to assume that he got it for a pretty decent price. And I'm wondering if he's looking at it as more of a investment opportunity as opposed to making it his primary residence. I, 
you know, I've, I've never talked to the individual before, but there are a lot of investors and individuals seeing this as a pretty big opportunity to buy property in this very desirable area and be able to benefit from building a, a structure, a home that they could later on sell or rent out. But the fact that he's looking for a strategy to build property faster means that he is paying attention to every line item, including construction interest, that if you were to take up to three years to build out a property, that that comes out of the owner's pocket. Whereas if you can cut your construction down from three years to six months, then that's a win for the homeowner or the investor. Sasa Jokic is founder and CEO. His AI technology takes what's designed and constructs the framing, floors, and roof panels on location. Do you think this is the future of home building? This is, this is the present and the future of home building. Right now, the mobile robotic factory is set up in Los Angeles where the company plans to help rebuild homes for victims of the Palisades and Eaton fires. They're currently waiving some fees for fire victims and has pledged to build one home for underinsured families for every 10 homes built in the area. What's really important to point out here is just how disasters such as the wildfires in Southern California expose how broken the traditional methods of construction actually are. The bottlenecks that you have when it comes to having all of these trades needed all at once, you have in this scenario, they got 900 properties that are scheduled to be built out in 2026. And all 900 of them are going to need electrical, framers, HVAC, plumbers. And if you're pulling all of these trades at the same time for all of these 900 properties, there's only so many trades that you have access to. And that really does a job for your construction timeline. They mentioned earlier in the video that some people are projecting a three-year timeline. For you to take three years to build out a home, that, that's not typical. That is not typical to build or take three years to build a house out, with exception to these disaster areas that are going through a recovery process. And once again, pulling on all of the same trades all at once. Now with Cosmic's strategy, they are essentially a modular company because they're building certain parts of the home off site and carting that piece of the puzzle to the site that they're in turn putting together. And I'm going to assume that they consider this strategy modular as opposed to officially being stick built on the site and in real time. But this to me is a little different than modular because when I envision modular, I envision the whole facility, all four walls and some of the flooring and maybe even a roof all done off site and the entirety of this shell or this carcass is basically uh, transported to the site where it's installed at and, and they in turn do the finishing on site. But in this scenario, it's not necessarily sounding like they're building out the entirety of this shell off site, but only pieces and panels. But on site, it still looks like it's a stick build facility as we as we saw in a few of the previous images. Now, one thing I do want to point out is the company's pledge, Cosmic's pledge to create one property for the underinsured for every 10 homes that they build. And this is pretty good alignment when it comes to social impact and helping the community out. And it is really great for marketing. And I'm not saying that they aren't going to be able to achieve this goal, but if they don't, they're going to be called out for not being able to achieve said goal. And I've seen this happen where startups promise, overpromise too much to the community, to their customers. And this is something that they're opening up themselves for scrutiny. The minute that they're not providing that one property for the underinsured, they're going to get caught out. So 
just fair warning to Cosmic, make sure you stand on that because if not, the community is gonna remember. We are really on a journey to first really address the, the housing shortage right now in LA and bring, bring the uh, families back to their homes very fast. An analysis by the National Association of Home Builders estimates tens of thousands of homes aren't being completed because there aren't enough workers. It's an issue that slows building times and raises costs. The construction industry has been battling the issue with the labor shortage for, for decades. And you know we right now uh, are having a demand of building at 9 million homes in, in the U.S in order to fill the gap on the housing market. And we, we don't have people to build those homes. Nine million properties, nine million properties short. And he's absolutely right. We have an epidemic when it comes to skilled trades access. We don't have enough. We don't have enough bodies that are looking at skilled trades as an industry to create a career within or to have a career within. And the paradigm, is starting to shift a little bit. There were a lot of people focused on coding and, and things of that nature, white collar jobs. But now that AI is here and it's official, right? With ChatGPT, Gemini, the option of coding is becoming less and less. Of course, you still are gonna need coders and people who understand you know, coding stacks and things like that, but you're not gonna need a team of 10, 15 people to build an app or a website anymore. You may only need one, maybe two, depending on what you're trying to execute. So now you got those pool of people who would have went that route now trying to figure out what the other option is of how somebody could make $100,000 plus. And that is still the skilled trades realm. But I'm rambling a bit. The fact that the framers are few and far between, less and less access to good plumbers, electricians, HVAC professionals. And so now there is an option where this robot is actually building out homes. We're not talking about 3D printing a property. We're talking about literally building out and framing the walls via this panel strategy and you know, doing the subfloors and they're shipping these panels to the site. And of course there still needs to be a, a, a body, a human person or a multitude of, of humans and skilled trades workers that are installing these panels. But there has to be something that we can, we can look to as kind of being the, the next phase of, of construction. And unfortunately, the next phase does not necessarily incorporate real character in the build out of the home. The character is more or less coming from the interior design aspect of the property. You know, the color of paint that you're going to put on the wall, the color of floor. You know, it's not even real wood floors anymore but the furniture you choose, the paintings that you put on the wall, whereas these older homes have real character, right? Here in the city of Detroit, you got a multitude of properties that are 70, 80, 90, 100 plus years old. And the character and the quality and the craftsmanship of these properties, totally different in comparison to what we're showing you on the screen now. now Energy efficiency is a benefit when it comes to these new build properties, right? Or theoretically, it should be. Sometimes these properties aren't built as well as they need to be, but energy efficiency, you also have the opportunity for these properties to be fire resistant, which is very important here in California. But outside of that, like the, the character of these properties is is not is not the same and that's one of the things that we're going to be missing moving into the future and what our next generation of housing stock is going to lack which i really think is going to be an opportunity for people who are living in these hundred year old properties the property that we're living in now this is a hundred year old house or close to 100 years this property that we're living in was built in 1929 
right? And so as you can see, I got wood panels on the on the walls. I got plaster everywhere, uh, wood floors, real wood floors. And at one point we had stained glass uh, throughout the property. Some of it was was damaged before we bought the house. Um, but you know, two fireplaces in this property, you know, they're getting rid of chimneys, right? To a point where a lot of these newer properties don't even have fireplaces. 20 years from now, 30 years from now, these older homes, I think are gonna have an opportunity to separate themselves from the newer builds. And they in turn will be able to demand a premium if in fact, the individuals who are living in these older homes want to sell. I digress. For Vasudevan, his prefab custom home is becoming reality faster than he thought it would. What you're seeing here is a dream home. Uh, I've been wanting to build something from scratch, uh, from ground up, and I've been able to make this come true. He's hoping to see a finished product in six months and believes he's saving a few hundred thousand dollars using robots to build his future home. The National Association of Home Builders says the impact of AI on the industry is limited for now, but is likely to evolve in the coming years. Cosmic says this Santa Rosa home is the first single family home being built using its AI technology. So all in all, this tech won't just single handedly solve the housing crisis, right? But if cities like a Southern California or even Detroit want to build housing at scale, we can't just build homes one by one like it's the 1950s, right? We have to come up with innovative solutions that give us an opportunity to be able to succeed at building properties for generations to come. And the fact of the matter is the current method of stick build is just too expensive, too timely, and it is more and more becoming a thing of the past. You got 3D printed homes, prefab, modular, but the fact of the matter is we can't keep doing the same thing. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your thoughts about modular properties? What are your thoughts about AI building homes? And do you plan on buying a modular property in the future or do you already live in one? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'll talk to you in the next video.